welcome to the Wednesday edition of DC Today, still representing here in Nashville, Tennessee. Extremely busy day, lots of wonderful things happening, and markets uh, dropping a bit today, uh, again on uh, just, you know, volatility and debt ceiling discussion and different things like that. The actual chart of the market, it, oh, it, it did open down, and then it kind of zigged and zagged a little bit throughout the day. It made a little bit of a rally, about, oh, about 100 points up. Um, with uh, 45 minutes to go in the trading day, and then it gave that back near the end. So the Dow closed down 255 points, uh, which was 0.77%. The S&P was down about the same percentage-wise. NASDAQ down a tiny bit less. Uh, keep in mind, too, bonds have sold off a little. The uh, yields have come up. Today, the 10-year was up 4.8 basis points, so you uh, ended up with a 10-year Treasury yield at 374, and it had been at 350 a couple weeks ago. So that you've had a little sell-off there in Treasury bonds. Energy was up again today, and energy was the only sector up again today. So that's becoming a bit of the contrary sector in the midst of this market stuff. Energy was up a little over half a percent, and then real estate had gotten hammered. It was down 2.2 percent. Oil was up near $74 a barrel now, uh, up 1.43 percent. Um, the main comments I want to make, and I don't want to keep us long on this, but again, um, most focus uh, on this, the Fed, dis excuse me, the, the debt default discussions, debt ceiling discussions, whatnot. And I've been pretty clear how I feel about all of it. And uh, there's a couple of links in the DC Today, uh, today about, um, you know, from some of my commentary to Barron's and, and Fortune and some other media outlets. Uh, and, but it's something you guys don't hear first and that I don't say often uh, through the podcast and my writing and whatnot. Um, the issue I just want to remind us about is that, look, I don't believe that um, jobs are inflationary and the Fed's saying that they're concerned, you know, that they haven't been able to destroy more jobs to get inflation down is uh, either – that because they're lying or because they're telling the truth and I think they're wrong. Either way, it's not really my favorite thing in the world. But what I do believe is the case is that they will succeed in tightening credit. And indeed, I believe they already have. I think there's no question that credit's, uh, credit is tightened. And a uh, trillion dollars, uh, it's $981 billion. Uh, that has left the bank deposit system, I think that that's a legitimate tightening of a monetary base that leads to a decrease, a significant decrease in lending. And the funding cost of banks have gone much higher and the quantity of bank lending has collapsed. And, and that's all well known. So the question then becomes, well, what is priced in? And one can debate, and we do debate, is it going to be a deep recession, a shallow recession, will be a soft landing. Uh, my own hypothesis continues to be um, a narrow and targeted recession. Uh, but again, the issue in, in front of us is not so much predicting exactly what kind of recession you end up getting, but just noting that, uh, you know, what ends up impacting the broad economy and specifically from investors, corporate profits, um, I think is the inevitable decline in credit. And what that impact will be, this inevitable decline in credit as a result of this financial tightening, that's the sort of TBD. And then, of course, the other TBD that comes, I imagine, almost immediately after that first TBD is determined is what the Fed's inevitable backpedaling uh, looks like. And they will backpedal, I believe, out of the mess that they will create. And so it's kind of weird to watch it play out. And that's what I think we're going through. The impact of tightening credit the variables around all of that, those are real things that will happen in six months. And pretty much in terms of broad market economic stuff, everything else people are talking about right now will not matter in six months. So I would just keep that in front of you and you're thinking about this market. Uh, all right. So we went through all the market sectors. Someone had asked me why regional banking crisis may be affecting Western banks primarily. And I just want to point out that it's a, it, I get the question. But as a matter of fact, there's been three bank closures, and one was Western-based, uh, clearly with Western deposit base, Western focus, and that's obviously Silicon Valley Bank that was marketing to Silicon Valley in an obvious sense. 
And then the other was actually a New York-based bank, and that was Signature Bank of New York, and it was largely crypto-driven depositors and things like that. So you had kind of one East Coast, one West Coast. And then you have First Republic, and someone could say, okay, well, they were West Coast. They were based in San Francisco. And yet, actually, they had a pretty heavy concentration of branches in the Northeast, in addition to in the Bay Area of California. So, um, and then they had a significant l- lending book in the West Coast, but also in the Northeast. I think I mentioned before that I think they had banked uh, like 71% of the Hamptons for residential mortgages. So I wouldn't be comfortable referring to them as this sort of Western bank distress. I think it was much more uh, nationalized to you know, their issues and spread out. So really of our three bank failures, I don't think you have one that you could put into a West Coast classification. Ultimately, what you have in common is where depositors were vulnerable and where they extended and or where they extended loans that were too generous from a rate standpoint and then faced a rate, rising rate environment. You know, of course, you're going to have more of that in coastal affluent areas because there's more money in the coastal affluent areas. So that part may have felt more concentrated in West and East Coast, but not specific to the Western part of the United States, in my opinion. You know, that it's more of a money money center related issue. Uh, that's all I have today in the DC today. We'll come back with another DC today tomorrow, Thursday. We'll see what continues to go on out of this DC stuff. And um, in the meantime, you know, perhaps there will be something else noteworthy in the press to talk about. But I do know this if you have any questions, we are going to answer them about anything and everything related to financial markets. Send them to the question to questions at thebonsongroup.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for reading. Thanks for watching the DC today. Mm-hmm.